Number 105, describe the molecular structure around the indicated atom or atoms. And then we need to find the, the molecular structure of each of the carbon atoms in propyne, which is CH3CCH. Okay, a little bit of organic chemistry. I say that because organic chemistry is the chemistry of carbon and hydrogen. So if you have a molecule that's just a bunch of carbons and a bunch of hydrogens, that's an organic molecule. Okay, so what is the molecular structure? Well, molecular structure and a lot of other, uh, I guess a lot of other properties can be found by finding out what the Lewis structure is. So if you want to find out molecular structures or molecular geometries or a hybridization or, you know, formal charge or, um, I guess, I don't know, Lewis, um, uh, lone pairs, right? Everything comes from a Lewis structure. So we just take a little bit of time to write out the Lewis structure. Then we can use this chart to find out the molecular structure. So there's tons of videos on this channel just designated to drawing the Lewis structure in which we go step by step. Um, this one's going to kind of be a little quick inversion. So what you could do is you could pause the video if you want to and just see if your Lewis structure matches mine. Now here we have CH3CCH. Generally with organic molecules, um, if they're trying to tell you to draw it one specific way, they will kind of make you draw it from left to right. Notice how they didn't, you know, bunch these together and say that there's three um, carbons and four hydrogens. That would be really mean. So they, they will guide you as to how to draw it. So we're just going to be writing the backbone from left to right. Now, the first thing I see is a carbon. So I'm going to say C. And this carbon, it seems as if it's bound to three hydrogens. And remember, hydrogens can never be in the middle. So they have to be on the outside. So what I'll do is I'll say, okay, this carbon has to have one hydrogen, two hydrogens, and three hydrogens around the carbon. Now, well, what's next? The next carbon. And remember, that carbon can't be bound to hydrogens because that means that they'll be in the center. So the only other spot is right next to the carbon. And this carbon is now bound to another carbon that is then bound to a hydrogen. Okay, we have the backbone. Now we just gotta fill in the, you know, the bonds. Remember that all hydrogen bonds, not hydrogen bonds, but all, you know, bonds that are with hydrogen, they're only a single bond. Hydrogen can never have a double bond or a triple bond and it never has any lone pairs. So all the ones that are bound to a hydrogen, you just know that they have to be a single bond. Now, just start filling in the pieces. This carbon already has three bonds or six electrons. All of them want to have an octet. So this carbon would only need to have one more single bond and that carbon is good. Now I just need to bridge the gap between these two carbons. So I'll make a single bond, but this carbon has only two bonds, right? So it's got to do it again. Let's see, now it's got three bonds, it wants one more, so we have a triple bond. Okay, we finally have our Lewis structure for propyne. Now, we're gonna use this Lewis structure to find out the molecular structure or the molecular geometry, and we're going to use this chart. Now, your teacher or professor may give these to you on a test or quiz, but if you have a professor or a teacher like I did, we had to memorize them. So use flashcards, do what you got to do to just make sure that you memorize uh, the names of your structures that go with the categories. But we'll use this to kind of guide as to what the structures are. So we need to find out for each of them. So I guess we'll start from left to right. Let's do this carbon first. Now, for all of these, what you're going to do is you basically just have to have a tally of the total number of atoms that it's bound to and the total number of lone pairs. Now, in this case, this carbon is bound to how many atoms? Well, it's bound to 
one hydrogen, it's bound to another hydrogen, it's bound to another hydrogen, and it's bound to the carbon. Notice how I don't care about this carbon and this hydrogen because it's not directly bound to the carbon that's in question. So this one has four atoms. And how many lone pairs does this carbon have? None. I don't see any dots, right? The dots are the lone pairs. So four atoms and zero lone pairs. So the first thing we have to do is just find out what territory we're, we're in, whether we're two, three, four, five, or six. And that comes from adding up the four plus the zero. So we know that we're in general land of four. So here we are. And now there's three options, tetrahedral, trigonal, pyramidal, or bent. Nobody really says angular. And that all comes from the lone pairs. And we said that this, this carbon had zero lone pairs. So we're in this territory and we pick where they meet. So this carbon has a tetrahedral. Tetra means four, there's four guys around it. So that's the molecular structure or the molecular geometry for that carbon. Now, let's do the next one. And maybe we'll do this in a different color. Maybe we'll do greens. And when I'm doing this now, I'm gonna strip away all of these just so that we don't get confused. And we say, okay, now this is the carbon that we care about. Well, how many atoms are around this carbon? Well, there's a carbon over here and a carbon over here. Notice how we don't care about any of the hydrogens because it's not directly bound. So we have two atoms. And how many lone pairs did that uh, carbon have? Now, I didn't see any dots again. So zero lone pairs. So the first thing we have to do is we just have to add the two numbers together. So two plus zero is two. And maybe I'll put this in, we'll do this in green. So now we're over here. Whoop. And there's only one option for if you just have a total number of two, because you'll never have lone pairs. So this one is called linear. Okay. The last one is this guy. So let's just strip these away and say, okay, I want this carbon. So how many atoms is it bound to? Well, it's bound to one carbon on one side, two, uh, one hydrogen on the other side, right? So that's a total of two atoms, no lone pairs, add them up, we get a total of two. If you do have a total number of two, the only option is the linear one. So we have linear, and there you go. So we have two uh, carbons that have the linear geometry, which are 180 bond angles. So these, the bond angles between the triple bond and the single bond is 180. And since this one is also linear, the bond angle between the triple bond and that single bond is 180, because 180 is always the linear. And then we have 109.5 bond angles for these. Even though it looks like it's a 90 degree angle, this is 2D, this is two dimensional. In reality, these molecules have three dimensions to it. So there is going to be some that are coming out at you and some that are going away, and that's where the 109.5 comes from. It's not um, a two-dimensional compound. They have three dimensions to it, so it's 109.5, and that's it. I hope this helped. Let me know in the comments. Thank you for viewing the video. Subscribe to the channel if you want to help us out, and I hope you're having a great day. Keep studying hard, and I will talk to you in later lessons. Okie dokie. Bye-bye.